Welcome to Screencastify.com. This is a great resource for teachers to create lessons for asynchronous online learning. In order to get started, all you need to do is visit Screencastify.com and click on the Add to Chrome button. Once you click on that, it will take you to the Chrome Web Store, and all you have to do is click Add to Chrome to, in to install the extension. And then once that's installed, go up to the little puzzle piece at the top right of your Chrome screen, and then find Screencastify and click the pin next to it. That will pin it to the screen so that you have this little arrow with the camera in it. The very first time you click on this, it is going to ask you to do a setup. So you create an account by signing in with Google. Make sure to allow camera and microphone as well as the drawing and annotation tools. And then it will take you to the Yay, you installed it screen. Now, after you've done that, clicking on the arrow will give you a different menu. So when that pops up, it allows you to record the browser tab so I could record just my Hooray screen, the entire desktop so I could switch between screens and windows, or just the webcam. Now, the nice thing about this is that if you do just the browser tab, for example, you can embed the webcam. So at the bottom right hand of the screen, there will be a recording of yourself so that students can see you talk as they look at the material itself. So be sure to select the default microphone and webcam. And then when you're ready, you click record. And then you see that the image pops up. You can actually move that around if you want that to record somewhere else. And then there's a menu down at the bottom. So if you want to pause your recording, you can click the pause button. And then when you click stop, that'll end the recording. While you pause it, what you can do is actually click on like the pen, choose your color, and then you can annotate the screen or make a drawing of something. Then when you go back and click play to start recording again, those drawings will just show up for students and they won't see the time that it took to draw those, which is nice. Then when you're done recording all together, you click the pause button and then stop to end the recording. If you mess up and you'd like to start over, you can actually click the restart recording button, which is really nice uh, because one of the drawbacks with Screencastify is that the free version only allows you to record for five minutes. Now, that isn't a big deal because if you have any sort of experience with video editing, you can very easily stitch those together. But for some people who don't wanna go through all those extra steps, that can be a hassle. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording here and then it will automatically load the video detail screen and it shows you on mute at first exactly what you recorded while it loads and then you can sh copy the shareable link so that students can stream the video just from screencastify you can share that link to google classroom or publish it to youtube then you actually have some download options as well you can download this and if you download it that allow students to watch the video even if there is some sort of a streaming problem. So there was some overload with Screencastify last March and April when everybody shifted to online learning. You can also export it as an MP4, export just the audio, or I've had some success with exporting these as animated GIFs because then you can do a very short piece that shows on repeat for students to get a good sense of a direction of some sort. So once you're done with that, all you have to do is share it out and then you're good to go. If you would like to trim it, you can move the buttons around front to back, click on trim right there, the scissors, and then you can save it or cancel it as you go. Then you actually have a menu as well. So you can see my recordings. So if you've made multiple recordings, you can refer back to those and edit them or share them another time. Um, and then you can play around with options. Uh, this can be nice because you can create keyboard shortcuts. So if you want to create a keyboard shortcut to uh, stop the video or to start the recording again, you can do that. Now, a nice alternative to Screencastify is Loom. So all you do to access this one is go to loom.com and then click on Get Loom for free. Then sign up with Google. And if you use your Skyview email address, uh, it will actually give you a free pro version of Loom right now. The very first time you log in, you will need to accept their privacy terms. 
And then the first time you log in, you'll just tell them that you're using it as a teacher, continue, and then it'll prompt you to install either the desktop app or the Chrome extension. In this case, we're going to install the Chrome extension the same way that we did with Screencastify. And then once that loads, it'll take you to the Loom home screen. Now, similar to with Screencastify, you wanna to go to the puzzle piece, find the Loom extension and pin that so you see the little pinwheel at the top there. Then when you want to record, you'll click on that pinwheel and it'll have a drop down menu. The first time you do this, you need to be sure to give it access to your microphone and camera. And then click the pinwheel again. And similar to Screencastify, you can select whether you wanna show the screen plus your webcam, the screen only, or the webcam only. If you'd like to do the full desktop, you can select that. Or if you'd like to do just one tab, you can click on current tab. Now, the drawback to that is that it doesn't allow you to select which tab you would like to record on. You need to be on that tab when you start recording. So once you're ready to do that, go ahead and click start recording. Just like Screencastify, it does give you a countdown. So if you'd like to switch windows or open up something else, you've got a little bit of time to do that. We also have our image. This one's a circle instead of a square, but you can move that around. This one does take the menu with you for the recording. So once you're done recording, you click the check mark to stop. You can pause the recording. It allows you to resume there as well. X cancels the recording, or if you'd like to hide this menu, you click the little three dots there. Then once you're finished recording, click the check mark. And then again, similar to Screencastify, it takes you to the editing page where it gives you all the details. This one prefers that you stream the video from the Loom website. So it pretty much just prompts you to share this link. Now with the link, you can actually share it or you can make it public so that it pops up in Google searches as well. You can invite people using their email addresses or you can add a password if you're working on a password protected project that you only want certain people to have access to. Once you come down here to edit, you can click on settings and it allows comments. So I typically turn those off. And then it also allows emoji reactions similar to Facebook Live. I turn those off as well. Animated thumbnails uh, just shows the first couple of screens from the video on the thumbnail there. And then you can use the branded player. You can also allow viewers to download the video and then show the analytics to the viewer. I don't feel like my students need to see that. Save it, and then you can trim it, similar to Screencastify. You can move the beginning and end. I do like the trim feature on this one a little bit better because you can play it. And then if you jump to a certain point and click Start Trimming, it starts trimming from that point to the end. So you can move that around. And then once you've got it where you like it, you just click Remove and then publish the changes there. It takes a few seconds just to upload that or to make the changes, and you're pretty much good to go from that point. Now, if you'd like to, you can download it right here. You can duplicate the video, trash it, or share it out this way. Then again, like Screencastify, you have a personal library of your videos, so you can look back. And I like that you can actually put folders in your personal library with Loom, so you can categorize these as you need and refer back to them as you need to. So that's pretty much it for these two. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you do have any questions or you need help with anything, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, happy casting.